What's up, Ball Nation? It's another good morning here in Big Orange Country, Bob. We eked out a win last night over Kent State, uh, 71 to nothing, uh, 65-0 at halftime. Right. Um, Bob, what are some initial thoughts of the game for you? Uh, you know, pretty well domination town. Uh, you know, well, I, is that a strong word? That's a strong word. <laughs> I don't just throw that word around lightly, Tim. <laughs> we, 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 as we have heard from previous videos, yes. I will not just throw that word around, but that was domination right there. Um, you know, one of the biggest stats I've seen that I thought was very interesting, uh, the very very telling so far for us this, this season, is we broke an all-time SEC record of 178 uh, points differential for the first three games. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I reckon that's second all time uh, among all conferences since 1936. Uh, and you can't do that without the schedule helping you out. Right. Yeah. And it could have been yeah. worse. I mean, we, like I said, we was up to 65 points at in the first half. Uh, I mean, we could have hit 100 if we wanted to. Uh, easily. Uh, I mean that's that's without you know much of a stretch there. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. You got Samson. I mean, speaking of records, they had four TDs last night. I mean, the guys halfway through there, halfway there to tying a Tennessee record for touchdown runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the record being 18. I think he's at nine right now yeah. through three games. Uh, we had 456 yards rushing last night, Bob. Yeah, and Quite honestly, you know, I mean, like you said, I mean, we're playing, I think 10 guys ran the ball last night. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the biggest takes away, takeaways that I think it's, you know, maybe as a casual fan, probably don't pay much attention to, but I've enjoyed the fact that we have, we are playing a lot of people right now. We've got a lot of people getting some rest. We're getting a lot of people that's getting valuable, valuable game time. That was something I had a problem with last year. Uh, seemed like we could, we didn't have enough games where our, our second, especially our third team guys, a lot of young guys, where you get your development. Uh, well, we're developing that roster now, and, and we're, uh, it's something I like too, Bob, is we're rewarding guys who will never, never otherwise see the field. Mm -hmm. um, there's some guys that went home last night. They're going to have memories for a lifetime. Yep. They play in Neyland Stadium for the first time, maybe the only time in their careers, and actually got, you know, caught a pass, uh, ran football, uh, maybe scored, you know, something they may never do again, make a tackle. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they work their butts off and uh, very rarely get accolades for it. So, you know, hats off to you guys. I hope you get another chance or two this time, you know, during the course of the season, maybe against UTEP or uh, uh, Michigan State. Else. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cause they, they look about that level. No uh, bad. Yeah. But yeah, um, Hopple, he put his foot down on on this other, you know, on every team he's play, we've played so far this year. Right. And you got to give him credit because it's hard to be focused like they have been. Yeah. They've come out. And uh, so easy to play down in your competition. So easy to come in just um, hosting. Yeah. They've not done that. Yeah, that's been impressive so far. Um, that, that's I like that. Um, you know, speaking of some players, Bishop, I, I don't want to bypass this. He had seven carries for 120. He's a guy who has took... Uh, well advantage of injuries and some of these games to, to show that he can play. Yeah, th there's a lot of people criticizing his staff for not going into the portal to get a another running back during the offseason because yeah. they know Selden was hurt, um, Lewis was hurt, and if something had happened to Dylan Sampson, you know, it could have got bad ugly uh, quickly. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't. I, I didn't think they would need to. I had, I had faith in St. Uh, Bishop. Uh, and the staff definitely did. They knew what they had on her. Which now, 
that one thing about it, though, I mean, I guess the reason why, let's look at Selden. You know, he's been out quite a bit, so, and Bishop's not quite re ready, apparently. You mean Lewis? Lewis. Uh, yeah, Lewis, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Dil uh, Dylan Lewis. It's not been quite right there yet. Is it Dylan? No, it's not. It's Peyton Lewis. Peyton Lewis. Yeah, right. Peyton Manning, Jamal Lewis. Right, yeah. Put them together, right. you've got a superstar. Yeah, I don't know why I'm struggling with that one. Um, you know, I can't be too down on any aspect yesterday. Uh, I think that we come out of this game pretty injury-free other than Sham. Uh, I hate that because it looked like to me that could have been, that could be in like a season ending. He was in some pain in that knee. Yeah, that didn't look good. Um, but, you know, he is a backup. No starters went out uh, that I know of. Well, and, and we rested several before the game. You know, if this had been a competitive game, Lance Hurd would have went. Uh, we held out Cam. He, he would have went, to be honest about it. I, I, I kind of personally like the fact that they kept him out. He'd been mm -hmm. in concussion protocol. And, yeah. you know, the farther you get away from that concussion, the less likely you are to reconcuss. Right. And uh, that is not something you want to start having a runner back, particularly start having issues with. Yeah. Uh, they take a lot of hits to the head army. Yeah, that was that was good to them to do. Well, let me ask you this, Tim. We've we've looked about as well as we can look through three games. Anything that uh, sticks out to you so far? I mean, if you want to nitpick, and that's probably what we're at at this point, nitpicking. Nitpicking is it. And that's, you know, you can say, well, you know, we're, how many sacks do we have? Probably not as many as we would have thought. No, I, I would have thought we'd uh, probably about seven or eight more than what we got right. Yeah, but teams are, you know, they're getting the ball out quickly. And yeah. limiting their offensive options. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm fine with that because you're still affecting the other team's offense without yeah. the sacks. Uh, you know, against the teams we've played, I would have loved to uh, kept the pocket a little cleaner than what we've kept it for Nico. That, that's probably my two biggest concerns so far is, and the, you know, the whole sack thing shouldn't bother me because I know we got peers. Well, we got a lot of guys that can get after the quarterback. We got a lot of guys. Yeah, we do have a lot of guys. They have, I can't imagine a group regression. No. Our, I mean, Joshua Joseph, uh, I just think the other teams are like, hey, we're having to get this ball out quick. Otherwise, uh, they know what they got coming at them. Yeah, well, you're not seeing many passes downfield on us. That's for sure. They're they're getting it out. They're running it. They're they're trying to avoid getting the 17 yard losses. You know. Yeah. Um, and like you said, Tim, I think the other thing that if I had to nitpick, I feel like our pass protection's not been the greatest, uh, considering our competition. Yeah, but you know that's that's something I think week by week you can kind of tighten that up. Mm -hmm. uh, as the group plays more and more together with each other. And, and once again, like I said last night, uh, we have, well, not just last night. I mean, we're playing people, we're rotating people on the offensive line. Um, again, guys in there quick, early. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, so we're going to give up some stuff. Uh, right. But like I said, that, that's nitpicking. Um, we really won't know anything until after Oklahoma. They're, uh, they're good enough on defense. We'll see if we have a problem. They do have a very good defense. Uh, I do believe in that. Um, you know, there's some some issues with the offense, and uh, we'll have a maybe even two videos on Oklahoma because I think we ha we'll have quite a bit of information on them this week. So look forward to that, guys. Uh, if y'all like that kind of stuff, I think we should have about as much information as anybody between the two videos on them. Um, so I don't want to dive too much into them just yet. No, but let's look around the conference, Bob. Yeah, let's, 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 let's have some noteworthy things this week. Uh, number one is, by the time you're reading this, they may or may not be Billy Napier news uh, going, Bob. Yeah, uh, there's some speculation that he could end up getting fired. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to happen. Does it happen today? But I mean, it's awful early. I don't know if I remember 
about a coach getting fired at this point in the season before, have you? No, no, that's very, very early. Board of Trustees have, has called a meeting, though, for this uh, Sunday morning. And um, that can't be good. Even if you don't get them fired, you get them a vote of confidence. How, you know, what is a vote of confidence? It's a vote of confidence. We're about to fire here. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, that's what a vote of confidence yeah. is. Uh, I've never understood that. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to fire you this week. That's what that means. Yeah. So they, they need to reword that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Sun Belt Billy is um, going back to the Sun Belt or somewhere else, most likely. Yeah. Unless he can pull a rabbit out of his tail end. He's uh, about the end of his tenure. I think the real story, though, then, Bob, is who did he get? I mean, you know, they on their message boards keep mentioning, uh, I've seen two names a lot. Uh, and they're both probably, they're definitely the wish list, you know. It is Urban Meyer and uh, Lane Kiff. I don't see Lane going there. Uh, just maybe I, one time I would have. But well, I agree. One time I think it was a, um, would have made a lot of sense. But he's got it rolling at Ole Miss, unless Ole Miss is just, completely went and throwed all their money in on this season and he thinks that uh you know this is not sustainable but right now they looking good uh and florida's a little bit of a dumpster fire right now i mean it's kind of reminds me of uh my team you, you said even back a few years ago yeah. um it's saying uh, the athletic director that is uh about to be fired himself so he's not if if they do make a hire I'm hearing that he's not going to be involved in the decision making process. So, I mean, automatically you're going into a situation where you don't know who your athletic athletic director is going to be. That is a big deal to coaches. Yeah. That they don't like knowing, not knowing that the guy who who their athlete who's 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 my boss gonna be. Right. You know. Yeah, that's huge. I um, mean, it really is. And then the uh the president is the interim down there, so you don't know how the academic side's gonna be. Uh, with the athletic department, you uh, their NIL is having issues with the uh, Jackson Rashada thing, yeah, and uh, their facilities are some of the worst in the conference. You're walking into a mess. So if you're Lane, do you stay at Ole Miss, which he has built and has rolling and has one of the best funded NIL collectives in the game today? Mm -hmm. uh, I said. It makes a lot of sense going to a university with such a potentially high ceiling, but you're walking away from a good situation into a dumpster fire, and you better have a lot of buckets of water on hand. Yeah. You've got a lot of fires put out. Honestly, if they don't get Urban Meyer, mm -hmm. he, he, they're not. Yeah, I, I don't see that either, but if they may not get they may not get somebody that's very good. I mean, we'll see about well, that. Well, what they're going to get is somebody that wants a shot at the big time an oc or maybe an up and comer I, no i think it'll be a head coach but i think it's going to be a group of uh non-group of uh the smaller groups I, right I think that, maybe a jamie chadwell maybe 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 jamie chadwell maybe uh G alex Golish, even though he's only been head coach for two years right um you're going to get, get a guy that's wanting to come up into the big time yeah that's who they're going to get um the other big game i uh, probably the most interesting game for this week man was the fact that and you're talking about a surprise, and I, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> no one saw this coming, Bob. I mean, man, one week to next, you just never know. I was surprised last week by how badly Kentucky played against South Carolina. That that one shocked me. And then they outplay Georgia. Yeah, I'm going to take the country. Yeah, they lose barely, but actually, I mean, had like what? Uh, Georgia just had 12 first downs to to. Uh, Kentucky's 23. That's that's kind of mind blowing. George, Georgia was pretty pair outplayed. I heard someone say they have a 10 1 and 1 rule. Mm -hmm. And they figure that every year you're going to have one game where you play way over your head, one game where you play like crap. And the other 10 games are kind of what you are. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a feeling Georgia probably had their, well, we're crap game yeah. yesterday. And Kentucky may have had their over their head game yesterday. Sounds but like it. Bottom line, though, uh, Georgia was lucky to come out with a W down there. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, there was, absolutely. Um, They'll fall in the post. Yeah, I think they will. I think they will. I think they got to. Yeah. When you lose. I don't think they'll fall far. When you almost lose. You know? They'll, they'll fall. Uh, you know, the, uh, you had the South Carolina versus LSU game. If there's any South Carolina fans that's listening today, you're more than welcome to go back to the uh, pod we did last year after the Alabama game. When it, it, you'll see it. It has a uh, official with a, a bunch of money in his hand waving it. Right. I think you'll either get a lot of enjoyment or it just make you matter, one of the two. Right. Uh, the end of that game, if you're a Carolina fan, you're definitely not happy with the officiating. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of other fans had a lot of issues with it. Right. I, I agree with that one. Um, that was um, that was a good game, though. I mean, um, I thought so. Uh, thought South Carolina was going to pull that one out early on. Uh, you know, they're very disappointed at this point. Um, you know, I, not a not in conference, but I saw that Michigan. And I was kind of tracking that through the through the game there. Uh, only beat. Butch Jones led Arkansas State by 10 points. That Michigan's a team that uh, I think we kind of mentioned it earlier on in the year. I would not be surprised if I, well, at this point, I'll be surprised if they make the playoff. Yes. And quite honestly, they probably shouldn't be in the top 25, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you figure Big Ten's going to get four teams. I mean, you, they're like the ACC. They're going to get between three and five, most likely four teams in the playoff. And you'd think it'd be, you know, Iowa State, Oregon, Penn probably State. Penn State, and probably Michigan is that fourth team. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not, yeah. Michigan looks bad, uh, particularly at quarterback. Yeah, their quarterbacks definitely holding them back. Uh, any other games that's, that you found interesting or anything in particular dealing with any of that stuff, too? Well, I guess the last thing, uh, game that jumped up at me, Bob, was uh, Oklahoma against Tulane. Mm-hmm. You know, we play uh, the Sooners next. Uh, they they start the year off rough. That's hoping to bounce back a little bit last week. Still undefeated, of course. I mean, right. Top 15 or so, but and and they did beat beat Tulane. They wasn't going to lose that game, um, but they they look better in some things. Still got questions. Jackson Arnold um, running the ball too much, uh, but they they they're getting by with it so far. But uh, and, and he's got wheels; he can move. Yeah, he got wheels, but uh, he's gonna take a hit one too many at some point, and uh, they're gonna see who their backup is. Yeah, I don't know what point of the season that'll happen, but uh, if he don't start, if they don't protect him better, and he doesn't. Uh, Dial it back a little bit. He's yeah. not making it through the season. Speaking of backup quarterbacks, um, Arch Manning got in the game yesterday and uh, had a decent start. Yeah, not bad. Five touchdowns that he's responsible for between running and passing. Yeah, I think he had touchdowns on two of his first three plays. Not uh, bad. Not, not bad. bad. Uh, yeah. Looks like Texas is okay, even if uh, yours is out for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason uh, beyond the name of Manning of uh, why Arch was highly recruited. Uh, but I will say this, it helps when you're on a dominant team. And um, absolutely, and you're playing scrubs. Right. I mean, Let's see what he does again. We've the, done the same thing, you know. Yeah. See what he does, what he does, uh, gets good in competition. You know, remember, guys, we got uh, an Oklahoma preview coming up. We got a lot of uh, stuff we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about, you know, what to look for with us against them, the potential matchups. Because I think there is some matchups with this one that, you know, sometimes it's just team against team. There's not like a, a, a particular thing that sticks out. I think there may be a matchup or two here that uh, that we can take that, advantage of that will decide this ballgame. Mm-hmm. But uh, until then, Tim, uh, let's go. Uh, how about a go balls? Go balls. Uh, go balls.